Does any organization have too many positive leaders? The obvious answer to that question is no. And thus, Christian Leadership Academy has been born at the House of Worship. The Christian Leadership Academy is simply a uh, year-long program that's designed to build you as a positive Christian leader. You can go to the website at the www.thehouseofworship.com, look under ministry, and you find out all the information about it and how to apply online. Classes begin January 20th of, two, uh, of 2018. Look forward to seeing you there. Stand to your feet and clap along with us. Hallelujah. Hello, everyone. This is Pastor Tony from the House of Worship in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And we are excited and delighted that you have invited us into your home uh, tonight. Uh, man, I've got an incredible word for you tonight. Buckle up, if you will. And um, this is really uh, a message uh, for everyone, um, especially uh, parents, but specifically it's a message for dads. And I think as you look around the, um, the landscape of this uh, nation, we know the statistics about uh, when fathers don't have a voice in their children's lives, when fathers aren't in the home, if you will. And this is a, an encouragement, biblically uh, based, obviously, uh, about two fathers to help them to take their rightful place and their rightful stance in regards to raising up the children that uh, they, should, uh, they should raise up to be the, the husbands that they should be. And, and, and ultimately, uh, if fathers, men begin to operate the way that they should operate, this nation will be changed as a result of it. So let's go on and take a look at the uh, message and I'll be back in a few moments, um, excuse me, be back in a few moments to talk to you some more. So grab your Bibles and uh, if you don't mind standing with me in, in reverence to God and turn to Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter. Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter. I'm just going to read three verses. Uh, I'm going to read out of the New American Standard Bible. We stand here at the House of Worship in Oak Ridge at our Oak Ridge campus at our 10 o'clock service where our mission is to glorify God and to help others to personally know and grow in Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 31, verse 7, 8, and 23, my Bible says this. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall give it to them as an inheritance, and you shall give it to them as an inheritance, and you shall give it to them as an inheritance. Verse 8, and the Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed, or do not fear or be discouraged. Verse 23, then he, then Moses commanded Joshua, or I'm sorry, commissioned Joshua, the son of Nun, and said, be strong and courageous. There it is again. Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the sons of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. Amen. That's God speaking. All right, you may be seated in the house of God. So a couple things here I want to make sure we get the backdrop and the, and the, the, the foundation, if you will, of the scripture. And so what we find here is uh, they, uh, the Israel has, has come out of uh, Egypt. They've gone to the precipice of the promised land. They rejected God's word and said, we're not going to go in. And they've walked in the wilderness for 40 years. And so now they're getting ready to go in. All right. And Moses is giving his last discourse, if you will. For Moses is not going to go into the promised land uh, with everybody else because he disobeyed God by striking the rock instead of speaking to the rock. Not to mention the fact the truth is that the law can never inherit the promise. So he, Moses was known as the lawgiver, and he represents the law, and Joshua, in the name of Jesus Christ, represents the, 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 the promise. And so uh, he's, he's giving his last discourse to the people of Israel. It goes, it, it, it goes on for, for several chapters, and part of what we're watching here is the transfer of power from Moses to Joshua, the transfer of, of, of spiritual authority from Moses to Joshua, the transfer of headship 
from Moses to Joshua. And Joshua has been commissioned by God. He's been, he's been given by God a charge to keep, and that is to lead the people of Israel into the promised land. Now, one thing to understand about Joshua, if you go back and look at Numbers around the 12th or 13th chapter, when they sent the original 12 spies into the promised land on their first uh, um, you know, entree, if you will, up to, the, up to the promised land, Joshua was part of that group that went to the first 12. And Joshua was one of the only two, Joshua and Caleb, came out and said, we can take it. The other ten said, no, we can't take it. They, they, they melted the hearts of the people, and as a result, they walked in the wilderness for, for 40 years. So Joshua has become qualified to lead. That's critical for you to understand that you don't get headship, you don't get authority, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't get the transfer of divine spiritual power without being qualified to lead. Ladies, you're looking for a man, please look for a man that's qualified. Not, 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 not just everybody, not, not just Joe Blow, not just because he, he go to church sometime, but try to find a man, oh, oh, please, Jesus, find a man that's qualified. Find a man that has proven that he is on God's side in the name of Jesus Christ. So, so Joshua is qualified. Moses was God to Israel. You see that, that God spoke to Moses face to face, and while he does not speak to Joshua face to face, he does speak to Joshua, Joshua on an intimate level. And so Moses is as God to Israel, and so Joshua takes the place of Moses. So God speaks to Moses, and God and Moses tells the people what God said. God speaks to Joshua, and Joshua then goes and tells the people what God said. This is a picture of marriage. This is a picture of marriage that Moses and Joshua represents the head of the house, that God speaks to the head of the house, and the head of the house tells the people, tells the, the family what God said, and the people should get in line and follow God. It's a picture because Joshua is the head. Joshua is responsible for, Joshua was in charge of, Joshua has dominion over. As a father, as the husband of the house, you are in charge of, you are responsible for, and you have dominion over your house. Hmm? The best chance that the people had for, 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 for possessing the promises of God was to have a man like Joshua who was sold out for God. I came to tell you today, House of Worship Church family and friends, that the best chance that your family has of surviving the culture that we have today and walking in the promises of God is that they have a leader that is sold out, sold out for God. Genesis 2 and 9 proves that husbands are held responsible for what happens in their homes. I am responsible. We see this in the backdrop of the fall of humanity where uh, Eve is the one who was, was, was deceived, but Adam joined her in her sin. And as, as the, the voice of God comes walking through the garden, he does not come calling for Eve. He comes calling for Adam. Whatever is wrong in your house, man, in the name of Jesus Christ, husband, it falls at your feet and at my feet that we are responsible for what happens in our homes. Genesis 3 and 16 also proves that husbands have dominion over their families. Not that husbands are better, not that husbands are more exalted, but simply that this is God's divine process. I say again that the best chance that your family and my family will ever have of making it into God's promises to walk in the abundancy that God has designed for you and I is when dad is sold out for God. If you're a father in here today, I want you to take notes today. I just have a, a few things I'm going to share with you, and then I'm gonna, we're, we're running out of here. I want to walk in the Joshua spirit. In fact, I'm going to walk in the Joshua spirit. I have walked in the Joshua spirit. I'm encouraging you to walk in the Joshua spirit. The first thing that you and I have to do to walk in the Joshua spirit is we have to be strong. We see that here in the two times in the scripture. Be strong. Be strong when it comes to doing the will of God for your life. I, look, 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 look at a, a Christian brother and say, be strong. I say it like you mean it, be strong. 
Be strong. When it comes to the will of God and the things of God, be strong. He tells him to be strong. God, God tells him to be strong. Moses tells him to be strong. He tells him to be strong because he understands that when you start out on this journey to do God's will, you're going to have to be strong because you're going to come up against opposition in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to find it outside of your family, and you're going to find it inside of your family in the name of Christ. You better learn how you got to get with being strong. Mm. Be strong. Be, be, be resilient. When it comes to the word of God, be unstoppable. When it comes to the word of God, prevail against evil. At, at, man to man, let me say it man to man, get hard, doc. You got to get hard, man. You got to get strong. You got to get tough. You got to say, this is how it's going to be. You got to secure yourself in the word. Can't be one day, one way today and another way tomorrow. You got to not waver. You got to know the word and you got to do the word. You got to set a standard. And that standard is the word of God. That standard is the Holy Ghost. Yes, please be gentle. Yes, please be kind. Yes, please be sweet. Yes, please be loving. Yes, please be compassionate, graceful. Do all of that, but be strong. Joshua 24 and 5 says, if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He said, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what, they, what they're doing over at the Joneses. I don't, I don't know what they're doing over at, at the Washingtons. I don't know what they're doing down there at the Williams house. I, I don't know what they're doing over here at the, at the Smiths and, 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 and who else. He said, but, but, but let me speak for Mrs. Joshua and all the Joshua kids. We're going to serve the Lord. Now, I don't know what happened. You know, uh, um, when, when, when Mrs. Joshua heard that, she might have got caught a too. When she heard Mr. Joshua stand up and say, I don't know what everybody else is doing, but me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. She might have went like, oh, he ain't asked me what we're going to do. Huh? Be strong, my brothers, in the name of Jesus Christ. Be strong when it comes to the things of God. Now, only should I be strong, write that down, number two. He said be strong and be courageous. Or in other words, he's saying, don't be afraid of what might happen. Huh? Don't be afraid of what could happen. Don't be afraid of what might happen. He says, be brave, be bold, be stout. He's saying, in practical terms, don't defer to your wife because I just want to keep the peace. Huh? Uh, I know I can't get no, I, I know I won't get any help today. It's okay. I, I'm, I'm good with you not helping me today. All right, because I, I, I brought my help in the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? Huh? See, see, I've, I've heard guys say that. I've heard, I've heard a, 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 a husband say, that. "Well, you know, I don't. I, 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 I defer to my wife because uh, you know that keeps the peace in my house. The devil is a liar. How, how, how are you how are you going to abdicate your place of leadership? Huh? So, so that your wife could be happy, devil is alive. Hey, I, 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 have, I have been commissioned to lead. She might not like it, but she will like it eventually because here it is. Every woman really wants a godly man in the name of Jesus Christ that will lead her in the things of God. She just waiting for you to step into your spot in the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? I don't care how she was raised. I don't care what, how many strong women she had in her, life, in her life. Thank God for a strong, godly woman. I got one. I'm married to one in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to be strong. I, I want you. Hey, go, go, go look at Proverbs. In the Proverbs, in the name of Jesus Christ, a, a, a virtuous woman. That's a strong, godly woman. We, we're, we're not railing against strong, godly women in the name of Jesus Christ. But what we are talking about is divine process. Mm craziness. I defer to my wife because if I don't defer to her, she's going to cop an attitude. She's going to get mad. She's going to stop cooking. She'll go sleep on the couch. She'll get over it, man. Keep leading. Keep leading. Keep honoring God. Keep doing what it is that God has called you to do. Huh? huh? Here it is. Huh? We should only defer to the word. Mm. Jesus. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't defer to Gail. Huh? 
Yes, I understand. I understand these Ephesians 5. I understand Ephesians 5. It tells me that I should die. I should love her. I'm coming to that. I should love her the way that Christ loved the church to the point that he died. Yes, I get that. Everything that's not biblical, I can die to it. Everything that's not biblical, I can defer to it. What color are the walls, baby? Whatever you say, honey. What color the carpet's going to be? I don't really get that, but okay, fine. Let's do that. Should we have that vase over there? I have that vase over there. Okay, let's go with that. Should we buy a Yorkie or should we buy a Labrador Retriever? Okay, let's go with the Yorkie. A whole bunch of stuff I can die to, but I'm not deferring from the word. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about not allowing my family to go in a way I know does not honor God so anybody could be happy in the name of Jesus Christ. So, so, so the only thing I'm deferring to, and I'm deferring to the word, I'm deferring to that which brings God the most glory. I'm going to defer to that which brings God the most honor and, to, and nothing else. See, too many of us as husbands, we, 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 we got we to gotta twist it because we think we're in a popularity contest. Mm, oh, Jesus. Preach, preacher, preaching here in the name of Jesus Christ. We, 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 we think that we're in a popularity contest. We want the children to like us. Well, okay, if I can't, I can't do that because if I do that, little Bobby, he'll get mad and he won't talk to me. And, and I, I don't know what I'm going to do if little Bobby don't, don't, don't talk to me. If I, I can't do that because she'll get mad at me. And if she get mad at me, I don't know what. No, we are not in a popularity contest. If we are, we have an audience of one, and his name is Jesus Christ. Huh? Proverbs 13 and 24 says it this way. He who spares his rod hates his son. Not that he just does not love his son, but if you spare the rod of discipline for your son, the word of God says you, 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 you hate him, sons and daughters. But he who loves their children is careful, is careful to discipline. Now, one thing I want to make sure we're saying here, we don't, we don't, we don't discipline in anger. And we, don't, we, and we don't punish, we discipline. There's a difference between the two, right? So we discipline out of love. We, dif we, we discipline to, to get correction. We discipline to, to teach godly principles. We discipline so that we can develop a, 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 a thought process that provides positive choices in the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 19, 28 says, Chasten your son while there is hope, and let not your soul spare for his crying. Hmm? Or in other words, what he's saying is, if you wait too long, and you try to discipline your child, it's too late. I heard somebody say, well, I just can't, I just can't, uh, I, can't I just can't discipline little, little Bobby because when he, I discipline, he cries, and I just can't stand him crying. I just can't stand to hear my baby cry. I don't, know, I don't know how you do it, but I just can't stand to hear my baby cry. Let me tell you something. Either they're going to cry or you're going to cry. That's just the truth, man. It is. Either they're going to cry or you're going to cry. I had a, I, I, the best advice I can give you as a parent is this. Discipline your children early. Discipline them often. And if you do so, you won't have to discipline them long. Discipline them early. Discipline them often. And if you do so, you will not have to discipline them long. In the name of Jesus Christ. So one, I want to walk in the Joshua spirit. Anybody want to walk in the Joshua spirit today? Just ready? Okay, amen. I, I got to be strong. I got to be cur I got to be courageous. But number 3 is I have to learn to fear God. I have to learn to fear God. Here's why I have to learn to fear God. Because I don't know how to. Mm. I have to learn to fear God. You see it over and over in the scriptures. Learn God. Learn to fear him. Learn his ways. Learn who he is. You don't know how to fear God unless God teaches you how to fear him. You can fear him in your way and think you're good, but you have to learn how to fear God. How do I learn how to fear God? His word teaches me how to fear him. I cannot learn how to fear God outside of the word of God. If you're not reading the word of God, you don't know how to fear God. If you don't know how to fear God in the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot walk in the Joshua spirit. You can't be strong. You can't be, you can't be courageous in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, you can do it in your own, in your own ability, but that, that, that's going to fail. And for me to learn how to fear God, for me to be truly strong, for me to be truly courageous, as God has called me to be in the name of Jesus Christ, I have to learn how to fear God. And the only way I learn it is I learn it from his word. I can't get too much word. 
it's impossible for me to get too much word in the name of Jesus Christ because I can read the same scripture 20 times and get 20 different things out of it in the name of Jesus Christ because the reality is when I read the word, the word, it's not me reading the word, it's the word reading me. Hmm. He said you have, you have to learn how to learn how to, uh, learn how to fear God. You have to, you have to fear God. Not in the sense of being afraid of God, but in the sense of respecting God. In the, spirit, in the, in the sense of honoring God. Learn, I have to learn how to honor God. <laughs> I have to learn how to reverence God. I have to learn how to hold God in high esteem. I have to learn how to obey God. See, this is, this, I, I told somebody today, this, is, this, is, this, spirit, this, is, this has been on me, this spirit, this word. has been on me, and this word is, write this down, obedience is the only thing that establishes and manifests your kingship in Christ. Obedience. It's the only thing that establishes your kingship in Christ. And it's the only thing that manifests your kingship in Christ. The only way that I can be king, capital K, King of kings, capital K, king of kings, little k, kings. He's saying, I'm the king of kings. He said, Dad, you're a king. N not in the, the earthly way, not in the carnal way. Not I sit in my chair and I slam my fist on the counter, bring me grog, bring me popcorn. No, in the sense of you're the king in the spiritual way. You're the king over your house. You're the king over your, your family. But in other words, you have the same ability that a king does. Same ability to, to the word of God to manifest itself. The only way I establish my kingship in the name of Jesus Christ as a child of God is through obedience. Believe in my heart, confess with my mouth. The only way I manifest, I can, I can be a king, but not, but, but, not, but, but not manifest it. I can be saved, that makes me a king, but my family is wrecked. My wife is wrecked. My kids are wrecked. My home life is wrecked. Finances are wrecked. The only way that I can manifest my kingship is, again, through obedience to the word of God. If I don't know the word, I can't obey it. If I can't obey it, I can't manifest it. If I can't manifest it in the name of Jesus Christ, I can't walk in it. Uh, understand that learning to fear God means that I walk in obedience to the word of God. I develop a vision and a Christian mission for my family. What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your, what's your vision for your family? What's your mission for your family? Christian, why, dad? Do you have one? What, what, what's, what's your son going to be doing 10 years from now? What's your daughter going to be doing 10 years from now? What are you and your wife going to be doing 10 years from now? What's your vision? Because if you don't have a vision, the word tells me if you don't have a vision, without, without a vision, it all falls apart. What's your mission in the name of Jesus Christ? What, what, what's, what's the one thing, the mantra, the one thing that you say, I got to make sure I'm going to do this. I got to make sure that my family does this in the name of Christ. At my house, it's to make sure that God gets the most glory. If we honor God, whatever honors God best, let's do that. In the name of Jesus Christ, what's your mission? What's your vision for your family? If you don't have one, you got to get one in the name of Jesus Christ. Learn how, learn how to fear God. We must learn, brothers. We must learn the word. We must teach the word. And we must hold our families accountable to the word. Now, my kids are grown, and they got kids of their, well, two of them, one of them has kids of their own, and one of them any day now that has kids. It could be happening right now, I just don't know. I still hold them accountable to the word of God. You know, they, they grow, they, they think they know something. But I, I still hold them accountable to the word of God. I still hold her accountable to the word of God. She holds me accountable to the word of God. Are you holding your families accountable to the word of God? You might have to sleep on the couch for a couple of nights, but you got to hold them accountable. You might have to cook uh, a grilled cheese sandwiches for a few days, but you got to hold them accountable. Preach! Pastor, preach in the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? You, you got to hold them accountable. You got to learn how to fear God. You have to develop a Christian addiction. I hope you can receive this word, this incredible word. I said, very challenging word, but it's also a very encouraging word. When we look at God's word and what God tells us to do, how we are to operate as men uh, in our homes, with our children, with our, with our wives, 
Um, it's, it's, an, it's an incredible responsibility. Uh, it, it really is. But as we stand where we are supposed to stand according to God's word and God's will for our lives, uh, the blessings that, that flow from uh, our obedience to, to, to Christ and, and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us, uh, they, are, they are just enormous. And so I really want to encourage you to, to continue to walk in that path. Uh, if, you're not, if you're not in right relationship with, with Christ, uh, the Father through Jesus Christ, uh, then th this, is, th this word is going to be literally impossible for you, you to walk out uh, long term. And because I need the power, the working of the Holy Spirit inside of me to follow the, the, the word of God. And so I want to encourage you right now, if you don't have a right relationship with, with, with the Father through Christ, is to choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. And all you have to do is ask him to come into your heart. It's, it's a simple prayer. Um, and you can do it right where you are. So I'm encouraging you to do it right now in the name of Jesus Christ uh, to ask him to be your Lord and your Savior. Just surrender your heart and your will and your purpose and your plan to him. Uh, and he will truly, truly bless you. It's the best decision I've ever made. You're never going to regret it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to just pray for men uh, tonight. Lord, our, our, our nation is in desperate need of reliable uh, Christian men, Lord God. Uh, that's the backbone, if you will, of our society, the husband and the wife and the family all operating by your word, Lord. And so men have the responsibility and the right to, to, yes, to, to love our wives as Christ loved the church, to, to raise up our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But Father, to have reverence for you and to live a life that honors you and to model, if you will, uh, the Christian disciples life for our wives and for our children, Lord God. Yes, to be strong. Yes, to be bold. Yes, to take a stance for you, Lord God, but to do that with love and grace and humility. Father, I want to pray for uh, the men that are watching tonight and their, their wives that have men that are not watching. I, I want to pray for those husbands as well, Lord God. I want to pray for homes that are broken, Lord God, that you would bring them back together, that men, that men would, would, uh, would begin that process, Lord God. I want to pray for, for, for Christian wives who, whose husbands are not in right uh, relationship with you, Lord God. I just pray, Father, in the name of Christ, that you would send out a supernatural Holy Ghost uh, vibe, if you will, Lord God, that would touch men, Lord God, and turn their hearts, Father, to you, that, that, that fathers might be reconciled back to their sons, and that as a result, mothers would be reconciled back to their daughters, and Father, and there would be a, a bringing back together of the family as you purpose, Father, from the beginning, Lord. So uh, we ask you, Father, in the name of Christ to do that. And we, we, we believe in advance, Father, you've, are, you've already begun that process for your glory and for their benefit, we pray. Amen. So thank you once again for allowing us to be part of your home. We bless Christ for you, and we ask that uh, you would this week uh, honor him. Do your best to honor him in all that you do. Walk by faith and not by sight. It's in Christ's name that we encourage you. We bless you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Does any organization have too many positive leaders? The obvious answer to that question is no. And thus, Christian Leadership Academy has been born at the House of Worship. The Christian Leadership Academy is simply a uh, year-long program that's designed to build you as a positive Christian leader. You can go to the website at the www.thehouseofworship.com, look under ministry, and you find out all the information about it and how to apply online. Classes begin January 20th of 2018. Look forward to seeing you there.